Oh dear, oh dear, what was that? That certainly wasn't extreme, people. What was that? I turned into the Extreme Rules pay-per-view expecting extreme stuff. There was nothing extreme about this pay-per-view. How did you guys find it? I thought it was a bit shite. I thought it was a bit shite apart from the main event. But anyway, let's have fun reviewing the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. Let me know how you felt about Extreme Rules down below. It certainly wasn't Extreme Rules. I don't really know what it was, but... What we're going to do today, we're going to review every single match. So you know what? Shebang. Let's start with the first match. The Miz against Dean Ambrose. I didn't actually think this match was going to start the pay-per-view. And I wasn't really looking that forward to it. It's not as if we haven't seen this match before. And it's not as if we haven't seen the Miz Intercontinental Champion before. But I'm quite happy we have finally got a new Intercontinental Champion. Because Dean Ambrose has been absolutely shite. It's been an absolute balls up since the start when they put the belt on Dean Ambrose. I don't even know when they put the belt on Dean Ambrose. Because I can't even remember. Remember, it was that bloody memorable, but at least we've got a new Intercontinental Champion. I think Miz will do a good job, like he always does. So that's good. We did get a new champion. No more Dean Ambrose. He's been pretty shite as Intercontinental Champion, but the match itself was all right. It took a while to get into it, but once they got the whole, oh, Dean Ambrose, if he gets disqualified, he's going to lose the belt stuff, it was actually quite good. The Miz took the turnbuckle off. Dean Ambrose tried to hit... Miz into the turnbuckle, almost got disqualified, but he didn't. Miz then got slapped by Maurice, almost caused the disqualification, but it didn't. Dean Ambrose then got threw into the referee, almost got disqualified, but he didn't. But that was his downfall, because then he got hit with a skull-crushing finale. I quite liked it. You could see what they were trying to do. You could see what Miz was trying to do. It sort of worked. It was almost edge-of-your-seat stuff. But it almost wasn't. You know what I mean? I, I kind of wanted the Miz to win anyway. So it, it sort of worked. It sort of worked. But at the end of the day, it's the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. So this stipulation was a bit dumb. But anyway, new Intercontinental Champion. The match was alright. But we've seen it many times before. The next match, which we haven't seen before, is Sasha Banks and Rich Swan teaming up to defeat Alicia Fox and Noem Dar. I mean... Well, this was, a, this was just boring. It was just boring. I don't even know what it was. And I can't even remember why this match started. And I feel like this whole Noam Dar and Rich Swan thing has been going on for fucking ages. I just, ugh. What a waste of time. This was an absolute balls up. What a waste of time. Did absolutely nothing. Sasha Banks, what's happened, mate? You're once challenging for the women's championship. Now you're in a crappy mixed tag match. It was crap. It was awful. Alicia Fox wasn't great either. I don't even know if she can wrestle. Ugh, huge waste of time. Crap. So far, I'm not that impressed with Extreme Rules. So the next match we got was a kendo stick on a pole match. And this was officially the worst match of the night. It was absolutely shite. And I don't know why... I don't really know. I, I think I would quite enjoy hitting Alexa Bliss with my stick. But this match didn't even make any sense. It didn't make any bloody sense. Because apparently, the first person to climb and get the kendo stick can officially legally hit their opponent with the kendo stick... Bailey gets it. Next minute, bloody Alexa Bliss is hitting Bailey with the kendo stick. What's all that about? They might as well just have made it a kendo stick match. I don't know why it was on a bloody pole. Made absolutely no sense. And Alexa Bliss gets the win and retains her women's championship. Well, that's bloody fun, isn't it? Now, thankfully, she has retained her championship because we don't want to see another Bailey against Alexa Bliss match. It's been absolutely terrible. You know, the one thing that pissed me off was this match was so bad. But they've had four weeks to prepare for this. They've had four weeks building towards this. You know, they've spent four weeks on television preparing, performing, and setting up for this match. This huge match for the Women's Championship. And then they give us this. What even was it? What a waste of time. It didn't even, like, it lasted like five or six minutes. The rules didn't make sense. It was boring. Literally, the only moves that happened was hitting each other with a kendo stick. She wins with a DDT. And that's about that. I don't really get it. I don't really get it. It was crap. And also, what is the women's division on Raw? I mean, Sasha Banks has fallen. Where even is she? This match was crap. Where do they go from this? I don't really know, to be honest. But anyway, thankfully, it looks like this feud is over because it's been bad from the start. And all my days. That was the worst match of the night. Terrible. Anyway, the next match was the steel cage match. I don't really know what I think about this match because there were some pretty good moves. There's a double razor's edge. Off one of the top ropes, which was quite good. But it didn't really make a lot of sense. It doesn't really feel like WWE knew what they were doing with this pay-per-view. Because Jeff Hardy gets out of the cage. Next minute, he gets back up. But he's already left the cage. So how can he re-enter himself into a cage match? Why does he have to put his feet on the floor again after he's already done it? 
doesn't really make a lot of sense because I was watching that and the Hardy Boys actually bloody won. So I don't know if they're going to do anything on Monday Night Raw and say, oh, hang on a minute, the Hardy Boys actually won because Jeff had already hit his feet on the floor five minutes ago. I don't really know. Since when could you re-enter in a cage match? What a balls up. What an absolute balls up. Now, Sheamus and Cesaro are the new tag team champions. They were the only new tag team... The only new champions we got crowned on the pay-per-view. And um, I'm just not that excited about it. I'm just not that excited about it. We've seen it before... I don't really know what the Hardy Boys are doing. They won the bloody match, mate. They won the match. But um, I don't really know what the Hardy Boys do now. I think Matt Hardy is going away because his wife's pregnant or something. So I don't really know what they're going to do with Jeff Hardy. Sheamus and Cesaro, they are the new tag team champions. It looks like we're going to get another rematch between these lot, which is just going to be boring as well. I mean, how long has this feud been going on for? Dear God. Anyway, yeah, this match just didn't make sense. The whisper in the wind off the cage was pretty sexy. But apart from that, it just didn't make any sense. What a balls up. What an absolute balls up. It actually went tits up from the start. And why were the Hardy Boys even choosing a steel cage match? They should have just chosen a ladder match. That would have made sense and that would have been actually extreme. Jesus. Anyway, the next match we got was... We got a submission match for the Cruiserweight Championship. I mean, I was really looking forward to this match. And I've seen a lot of people say they really enjoyed it. But I was just exhausted... By the time we got to this match, absolutely exhausted, and I just couldn't get excited about it. Now, the submission match and the main event were the two matches I was looking forward to, and I was so drained and physically tired, I just didn't enjoy the two matches I was actually looking forward to. Now, this match certainly wasn't as good as their WrestleMania match, and that match was on the bloody pre-show at WrestleMania, but the one thing I didn't like was that Neville is still Cruiserweight Champion. Like, I was almost certain... Austin Aries was actually going to get the win. Finally, in the third pay-per-view match, he was going to pick up the Cruiserweight Championship. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen. What the hell? Who can stop Neville now? Who can stop this man? Seriously, I thought he was going to drop the belt, but apparently not. So Aries made Neville tap out to the last chancery on the floor. Oh, sorry, I'm reading the wrong thing there. Neville was able to hit a red arrow to Aries' back and then lock in the rings of Saturn to get the submissions victory. That actually looked pretty good. It did look pretty good, but surely we should be getting a new Cruiserweight Champion. A-double, where does he go now? I think this feud is over. They can't do a fourth match at a pay-per-view. Surely not. Where does he go now? I think they should have put the belt on Austin Aries, but I think it was an alright match. Certainly wasn't as good as their WrestleMania match and wasn't as good as the match at Payback, but it was alright. I mean, like I said, I was absolutely exhausted, so I didn't really enjoy it. But the other match I didn't really enjoy as much as I wanted to, was the Fatal 5-Way match. Now, this is the reason I actually stayed up until 4am to watch it. Who was going to walk out as the number one contender of Brock Lesnar's title? Was it going to be Roman Reigns, Big Doggy Doggy, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, Bray Wyatt, or Samoa Joe? Turns out, it's probably Samoa Joe. He's come up with the big stuff. He has come up with the big stuff. Samoa Joe apparently still undefeated for a while. Samoa Joe gets the win in the Fatal 5-Way match. You know, this match was alright. I thought the first half of the match was a little bit boring, a little bit timid, but there was a great spot in the match which really got it going. You had Roman Reigns spear Finn Balor, and I think it was Samoa Joe through the uh, oh, barricade, and then you had Seth Rollins do a frog splash off the top rope through the announcer's table on Bray Wyatt. What does he think he's doing? But that was great, and um, there was a segment right at the end of the match where you thought, Finn Balor, he's going, he's going for the coup de grace, he's got the win. Next minute... Samoa Joe sneaks in and he hits the Coquita clutch and gets the win. That was a great ending, I thought. I was like, oh no, he's just ripped it off Finn Balor. And it worked. It worked pretty well. The match was alright. It certainly wasn't the best multi-man match we've seen. The Survivor Series match, like, a few months ago was way better. Um, but it was alright. I thought it was decent. I think... I'm glad Roman Reigns didn't win. I sort of wanted Finn Balor to win. I see why he didn't win. They're saving out for that big moment. Finn Balor gets his universal title back. They can save that. That makes sense. Samoa Joe against Brock Lesnar. That's a pretty fucking awesome match. That is pretty fucking awesome. So that should be good. It's happening at Great Balls of Fire. I don't think Joe's going to win. So I don't really know what's going to happen. It should be interesting. It's nice to see a new opponent against Brock Lesnar. I didn't want to see Seth Rollins against Brock Lesnar. I didn't want to see Roman against Brock Lesnar. We've seen that. I wanted to see either Th Finn or Samoa Joe. And we got one of them. So I'm excited. I think that should be a great pay-per-view. But Raw has got a long way to go to get me back and get me invested. Now, I'm not sure, but I feel like I'm going to take a short break from watching WWE. At least watching Raw, I'm going to take a short break. Because this... This had to be good 
And I said before it started on Twitter, if it wasn't good, I'm going to take a short break. And I think I'm still going to take a short break because I'm still wasn't very impressed with this pay-per-view. It was a little bit boring. And yeah, it just... It just showed everything that I don't like about the current product in three hours. It was long. It was exhausting. A lot of stuff just didn't make sense or was a waste of time. I don't want to say it, but I think I'm giving WWE a slight break. I might give it in somebody the bank, give it a couple of weeks. I think a little bit longer. But anyway, I'll let you guys know the videos aren't going to stop, especially the gaming videos. I don't know. I don't know. If I do do prediction videos... I will do prediction videos, but just for the pay-per-views. I think for now, I'm going to stop watching Monday Night Raw because I just can't do it anymore. I'm so exhausted. It's boring. People are just not invested anymore, and you can see why. This pay-per-view is a great example of why. But anyway, Joe is the number one contender. That should be good, but apart from that, I'm not really that interested in anything. Austin Aries should have won the title. I don't know why the Hardy Boys lost that match, because Jeff had already been eliminated. The women's match was horrendous. I don't know what they're going to do with the division now. The Banks match was ridiculously bad. Means he's a new Intercontinental Champion, and some Oa Joe New number one contender. They're the two good things about this pay-per-view. Apart from that, it was a huge waste of time, and I think, I'm genuinely thinking I'm going to cancel my network subscription, because $9.99, I'm not going to get my money's worth this month. That was... It was bad. What did you guys think about that? Let me know down below. I'm going to give this show a... F I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. A 4 out of 10. But there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. That is my review of Extreme Rules. Smash the likes. Comment your thoughts down below. And also, I really want to start bringing some variety to the channel. Different games. I was thinking about maybe doing mobile gaming. Um, anything on the PlayStation. Anything on the computer, I can get it, I can do videos on it, let me know. I don't want to just keep doing wrestling because, as you can see, it's exhausting and sometimes it's not really that bloody fun. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know about that. Follow me on Twitter. I had some funny tweets last night that some people found quite funny. Smash the likes. Take care. Spike your hair.